So uh, welcome to tonight's session. So it's my my pleasure to introduce Damien Busby to you. So my name is Murray. I'm um, one of the members of council members of Meditation Australia, and uh, I see a few familiar names there popping up, which is lovely. Um, and so I'll give you a brief um, intro to to Damien, and then he will take over, of course. Uh, and he can describe what he's planning to do and he has some things to share with you too so just Damien's background firstly so Damien's first encounter with meditation was in a beach resort in Tahiti he was the only student to the yoga class in that day and the teacher decided to do a breathing meditation I promptly fell into a deep sleep however it was an unusual experience and has stuck with me ever since I was an avid reader of different spiritual traditions Several years later, Damien came into contact with the Tara Institute Buddhist Centre, just across the road from me, actually, through a share house, and since then has been studying Buddhism and attempting to meditate. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. In 1986, he started teaching some of the introductory meditation classes at the Tara Institute in Melbourne and has been doing monthly blocks each year since. As well as that, he has given talks on Buddhist meditation and philosophy at many schools, at interfaith gatherings, and has led secular meditations in the workplace. His own practices in the Buddhist tradition is taught by, my, by his teachers, the Tibetan Geshes, and over the years, he's come to hopefully gain some insights in how to introduce people to meditation, and also to understand how people react to and comprehend the instructions on meditation in many different ways. Um, Damien continues to work as an engineer in the automotive industry and his approach to meditation and explaining it is affected by his engineering and scientific education. <laughs> so uh, that sounds really interesting to me, being a scientist by training. So I'm very curious to know <laughs> what you have to share with us, Damien. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you, Murray. Um, yeah, so welcome, everyone. Um, I will... I've got some notes that I put together, which are just a basis for the talk tonight. And um, uh, I'll work through those and around them as well. So you're welcome to ask questions during that part. And then we'll do some meditation. And then we have time for question and answer after that. So um, it's, it's great that you're learning meditation to be a meditation teacher um, because um, it is something that can change somebody's life. So it's a, it's a, very, a very important thing to be able to do to teach meditation. And my life was changed by the meditation teachers that I have met and engaged with way back to, you know, the, um, the club med in Tahiti when, you know, a, a, the yoga teacher just took the opportunity to... Um, to do a breathing meditation and um, I think it must have been a bit of a unique experience for me even though I fell asleep that the that sleep or that situation was something that uh, did awaken something in me so I think to be a meditation teacher you've actually got the opportunity to to really um, beneficially affect people's minds and their life so um so I will just share my screen and um, I'll just move that to the side. So, um, so you should be able to see there my, my notes. Um, uh, just um, let me know if you can maybe give me a thumbs up or something. If you can see that. Yeah, great. All right. So, um, I'm not going to talk too much about Buddhist, some of the more Buddhist -y techniques, but I'd, I would like to share with you just my experience in the nearly the last 40 years of teaching meditation in a Buddhist context, but also in, in a non-Buddhist context in schools and at interfaith gatherings and in the workplace um, as well. So um, meditation the definition in, in Buddhism or in Tibetan Buddhism 
is that it means to familiarize or to habituate. And it explicitly uh, identifies that as a, to a virtuous object. So, so in a way, it's, it is restricting the definition that it is to habituate or to, to familiarize your mind with virtue or virtuous object. So you could say, for instance, that that anger is a form of concentration or a form of habituation, but it's a habituation to a destructive object or a negative object, a non-virtuous object. And so it's it's the result of it is that you become disturbed. So here, meditation definition is restricted to being the habituation towards a virtuous object so that its outcome is beneficial. And meditation as a tool is right throughout all, all of Buddhism. And two basic divisions, single point concentration and analytical, analytical meditations. But the important thing is that meditation uh, in the Buddhist context has a purpose. And so before any meditation, we are encouraged to generate a, a good motivation. And so just in regard to that, one of the great Buddhist teachers, uh, Shanti Deva, said way back in the year seven, 760, he said, if all I want is a little mental happiness, I should just devote myself to gambling, drinking, and so forth. So... Um, this is it's important because I think um, many people treat meditation as just something that for the two one minute or five minutes or ten minutes that there's a momentary benefit and and that's it. But it's important that meditation actually can be far more beneficial than just that momentary pleasure or momentary relaxation. And certainly, in Buddhism, we are encouraged to motivate ourselves for something well beyond just the one minute or five minutes or 10 minutes of the meditation. And we can say that the ultimate purpose of meditation is to overcome suffering for all living beings. So, so we can say that. In the shorter term, um, we can develop mindfulness and alertness. And, you know, that it, that in their qualities that enable us to become aware of our own state of mind and our, and our actions. And so we be, can become a lot more um, skillful in our actions and a lot more self-aware. So um, really any, any meditation that we do will develop that, that post-meditative quality of mindfulness and alertness. So mindfulness and alertness are not just qualities in the meditation, but they're also qualities beyond the meditation. And um, the more we meditate, <clears throat> the more those qualities develop in our daily life. And so then um, the, the benefit of that mindfulness and alertness is that we then, we then can accumulate merit or accumulate uh, a sort of a less faulty state of mind. And that enables then further development of concentration. And concentration, the progresses and the, it develops into a level of concentration called calm abiding. So I'm not using the, the Sanskrit words or the, the Tibetan words even, but karma abiding is the name for a, um, a, a, a very powerful level of meditation that becomes associated with a mental and physical sense of bliss due to the power of, the, of that concentration. So this is quite a high level of meditation. None of these things I possess, just, just for your interest. None of, the, none of these qualities I actually possess, um, but I've been hearing about them for 40 years now. So, um, But I, unfortunately, I do not have these, um, these states of meditation. Then that level of meditation power in calm abiding is essential then <clears throat> for 
a another type of meditation quality called special insight or in and this is meditations on the the nature of reality and the wisdom realizing the nature of reality so calm abiding is an essential prerequisite to be able to do those meditations effectively and so there's there's this idea of the union of the uh, single point concentration of calm abiding with a wisdom meditation on special insight into the nature of reality and it's <clears throat> and it's a union of the single point concentration and the wisdom that becomes the tool that enables a person to overcome the obstacles to liberation and achieve nirvana what's called nirvana so i am using one of the sanskrit words but it, it might be one you're familiar with uh, similarly, the development of love and compassion through meditation leads to a state of mind called bodhicitta or Buddha mind. And that, that is a, an aspiration. It's an aspiration for um, enlightenment. Well, it's an aspiration to benefit all sentient beings. And it's combined with a commitment to become enlightenment, enlightened to be able to achieve that benefit for all sentient beings. And so built into that is a realization that as an ordinary being, I'm pretty much powerless to really benefit others. Um, so then I have that the aspiration to become enlightened in order to be able to benefit other beings. And so that is really the, the outcome of the full development of love and compassion for others. So in single point concentration meditation we choose an object and we focus on it without distraction for the period of the meditation and it's a very common technique that you'd be well familiar with and it's it's common i would say pretty much to all religions and and secular traditions as well and the typical object is to is to focus on the breath and the key point here is single point and that means no wavering and 100% focus for the period of the meditation. And we must clearly know the object and then hold that object. Now, my, my own opinion about many of the meditational um, examples that you see in public life and that you see on the internet and that even that in classes that I've attended, there's a... Um, I think a tendency for people to keep shifting the object. So they may, for instance, say, they may say, for instance, you know, focus, focus on the breath as it comes and goes through your nose. Like they might say that. And then almost in the next breath, they say, feel the breath going down into your abdomen coming up again. So my, my view of this is that that is shifting the focal the focal object of the meditation and and many of the many of the i think the meditational practices that you see on the internet you will see that the person is is shifting the focal object almost every few seconds where they'll they'll talk about they'll talk about focusing for instance on the breath and then they might they might say um feel feel the peace of that or feel the bliss of that or feel so that they've, they've shifted the object from um for instance the sensation of the breath to a feeling and and i i just it's just my opinion but i think i think there's um there's a really problematic uh situation in many of the meditational instructions where it's not single point focus but the the object of, of um, meditation is, is changing quite rapidly as, and people are moving from one thing to another. And for that, um, on that basis also, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of the body scan meditation or certainly the way <clears throat> the body scan meditation is also a traditional Buddhist meditation but I'm, I'm not particularly a fan of the way that it's done in many situations. 
because to me it's it becomes a little bit like a drive up to the dandenongs that it's you're sort of going along you know look at this and then you go a bit further look at that and so it's sort of this um a bit of a tourist drive just working your way through the body and looking at the different muscles and and trying to relax them and and i think it's um uh, you know it's very popular and i'm certainly i've been in in the workplace doing meditation and people are saying you know please do the body scan do the body scan <laughs> but i i feel it's um it's sort of like a little bit of a almost like a tourist drive through the body uh, as an entertainment and not particularly uh not particularly conducive to um uh increasing focus so anyway that's a that's a personal opinion that you <laughs> you may or may not uh, think much of but um i just thought that's something i would share all right so then meditation in the buddhist context fix, fix, fits i mean it fits into a lot of different things but i'll just talk about it in relation to something called the three higher trainings and the three higher trainings are morality concentration and wisdom and and this is a progressive this is a progressive listing so we start with morality and then we achieve concentration and then we achieve wisdom and it's just in regard to that uh we can say that morality is the absence of mental afflictions so mental afflictions are, are things like anger pride competitiveness you know lustful attachment arrogance deceitfulness so and it's important to recognize that if someone is angry or strong pride or competitive you'll find that it's very difficult for you to be able to teach them meditation and it's also very difficult for them to be able to meditate because the presence the presence of anger or jealousy or competitiveness in their mind is disturbing to a point where it makes it difficult to meditate and particularly then if you're trying to teach them um it'll be make it difficult for you to be able to teach them because of that um disturbance in their mind and that's why um in terms of the three higher trainings morality being basically an absence of disturbing thought is the first is the first uh step and distraction distraction in our meditation is really just a result of attachment and desire always looking for something better and the mind just jumps from object to object due to forgetfulness or just looking for something new and better so in our meditation to be able to be 100% focused we need to overcome that sense of attachment looking for something new all the time we need to be content we need to develop a level of contentedness with the object that we've chosen and the meditation that we're doing so um i've taught meditation one particular time up in wodonga i can remember this very clearly where i was doing a simple breathing meditation and then i asked i asked the, the some of the people in the audience for some feedback and one of the people said yeah i saw all these colored rainbows and i was this and that and he was really enjoying the meditation but it was a, a a creation of his own mind or a creation of his own um desire and um so he just entered this fantasy world but and he really enjoyed it but it's it's not meditation and if you if you decide to do a particular meditation it's important to recognize the object and then engage in that meditation purely in that meditation and um so one object of meditation one aim of meditation is to develop this thing called concentration so we have or i have if i talk about myself i have a level of what i what normally is called concentration through the force of effort 
you know, so through my mental effort, I keep, I keep my mind on the object of meditation. But the mental factor of concentration is described as a factor in the mind that is that enables the mind to stay on the chosen object without effort for as long as desired without and an no distraction enters so technically this mental factor of concentration is actually a significant achievement for a meditator and it's a quality of the mind that um that merely so merely saying i want to focus on this my mind immediately focuses on it without distraction and without any effort being needed to be applied so um, that is quite an achievement uh, to develop that and it enables it enables a power of meditation which then can lead to many other things and so this factor mental factor of concentration we develop this over time through our practice of meditation where we're having to use effort to keep our mind on the object and eventually we are able to keep our mind on the object without applying any effort okay so um so as I said before, from single point concentration, we develop these two qualities of mindfulness and introspection, and they operate in our daily life all through the day. Once we've started to develop them, and it's basically, you could say it translates as self-awareness. And so that, that's a real benefit of meditation is that we can develop a, a self-awareness in our daily life, uh, which can be really beneficial. And mindfulness in this, you know, this term mindfulness from a Buddhist definition point of view means being able to hold the chosen focal object from moment to moment without losing it to distraction. And so it's referred to as a memory, being able to remember the focal object from moment to moment without losing it. And introspection is called a discriminating wisdom, and it checks that the object being held by the mind is the one that we chose we chose to be holding so these two these two enable us to become aware of what's going on in our mind and in our experience and they enable us to become aware of our own mental processes and actions in daily life okay and I'll keep barreling on there's a bit more I'd like to cover so the the object of meditation in Buddhism, ideally, is a mental object. And um, I just want to talk about what a mental object is. So, for example, um, if, if, I, if I have an orange and I, I see the orange, then I'm, I'm cognizing the orange through my sense consciousness, through my eyes. And then if I put the orange to the side and I recollect the orange, I'm bringing the orange, the recollection of the orange into my mind. And that recollected object is a mental object. And there's, there's quite a difference between the mental object and the physical object. And so in meditation, ideally, the object that we should choose is a mental object. And so, for instance, um, in Buddhism, if we were meditating on the, on the Buddha, we initially study a statue or a painting. And then when we are familiar with that, um, with the detail of that image, we then recollect the image and we focus on the mental image of the Buddha in our mind. And so there is a, there's quite a difference between meditating on a sense object and meditating on a, a mental object. So my teacher, Geshe Doga, gave this explanation just recently about what is a good meditation. So in our mind, when we're meditating, we have a subjective mind, you know, like my experience or my mind, 
and then there's the meditational object. And so we we have this thing of I I am focusing on the meditational object. So there's this separation of subject, the subject me, and the object, the object of meditation. And a good meditation, according to Geshe Doga, is where the subject and the object become one. There's no gap between the mind meditating on the object and the object itself. No separation, no difference. So it's like the mind and the object become mutually absorbed into each other. And so all the dualism of subject and object is removed. So to be able to do this, we have to be very clear about the object that we're focusing on and that the mind that we're using is a mental consciousness, not a sense consciousness. And so the object has to be this mental object as per what I just mentioned before. And the, the object and the mind merge together. Yes, as So sometimes when you're meditating, you might suddenly feel that, that, that the mind and the object you're meditating on just become one. Okay, so that, that is something to, to work on, to remove the gap between my mind or my perception as the meditator and the object that I'm meditating on, so that they sort of merge to become one thing. Uh, then just in terms of um, time limit, quality is more important than quantity. So even if we're only, if we start off only meditating for five seconds, that's fine. And this, uh, the idea of sort of saying, I'm going to sit down and meditate for 20 minutes. Um, in practice, it's most likely going to be one minute of meditation and 19 minutes of daydreaming or 19 minutes of sleeping or 19 minutes of going through your shopping list or something. Um, so it, that's important. And unfortunately, when I started meditating, I didn't do this much. And so my meditation is very choppy and, and not particularly strong. It'd be my opinion. And, um, so, you know, in unfortunately, to some degree, I habituated myself to distraction rather than habituated myself to good meditation. And then analytical meditation, just to mention that, that it, we choose a subject and we use our wisdom and our intelligence and knowledge. And we, we examine that subject in lots of different ways so that we um, develop some understanding or wisdom or we come to some conclusion and so examples of that uh, for instance would be to examine the faults of anger or the nature of reality or why why is it beneficial for me to develop love and compassion for others so these are typical sorts of meditations that we might do okay so um that's my sort of general presentation for today. And we'll now do some meditations. But has anybody got any questions or anything they would like to, to ask? That's okay. Um, all right. So are you ready to do some meditation? Are they nods of concurrence that I can see? <laughs> All right. So, um... All right. Posture is important. And the main, main aspect of posture is to try to enable the, our mental energy or our physical energy to be uh, in balance and to flow smoothly or evenly throughout our body so uh, a good med good meditational posture particularly with the spine straight is is good and i also think to to feel a symmetry of your body or feel a symmetry of your mind and your body so find a position find a position that feels balanced you know, to feel quite balanced. 
not too far forward, not too far back, left and right. Try to get a feeling for where your energy is centered and the position of your head also. You can and you can experiment with this in meditation. If if your head starts going too far down, it can make you sleepy and dull. But if your head is going too far up, it can make you sort of excited and a, and a little bit distracted. So to find that that symmetry of your body, you know, neither too too closed and dull or too open and excited. Um, so that that's one thing. And the, I'll do four meditations, all fairly short. So as I said before, if we're angry or got a lot of pride, a lot of distraction, uh, competitiveness, lustful attachment, whatever, if, that's, if those states of mind are strong in us, it, it will be an obstacle to meditating. So I like this meditation and same with the physical tension. If we have physical tension in the body, similarly, that, that can be an obstacle to our meditation. And so the body scan, the body scan is used to, to remove that physical tension in the body as a preparation for meditation. So this little meditation is, is one I do quite regularly. And in the meditation, um, we, we visualize that the tension in our body or the, the mental states, the disturbing mental states, we visualize that they take the form of black smoke and we, we breathe out that black smoke. We breathe it out and it goes out of our nostrils and down and dissipates away from us. So we are, we are eliminating the physical distractions and the mental disturbances. We're eliminating them through visualizing them as black smoke. And then we breathe in in the form of white light, uh, calm and peace, clarity, openness in both a physical sense and a mental sense. Now, in the Buddhist tradition, we would visualize that that white light is coming from a, visual, a visualized image of the Buddha in front of us, that we imagine that from the Buddha, we are receiving this white light as a blessing. Now, you can translate that into other traditions um, or even, even in a secular context, you can just think that it's, it's some sort of pure... Um, pure white light that is coming in, that is calming and relaxing and displaces all of my disturbance. So are we clear about the meditation? Is that, yep. So we'll just do it for a few minutes. So you, you look at yourself, you look at your mind and you identify any disturbing thoughts emotions, um, feel, physical feelings, and you, you breathe them out in the form of black smoke. So initially, we will do this meditation, but not combine it with the breath, and then, and then we will progress to combining it with the breathing. So, so let's you just start off. So scan through your body and your mind. And identifying any tension or negativity in your mind, any disturbance. And imagine that you breathe it out in the form of black smoke. And it completely leaves you, completely leaves you.
and then imagine that you breathe in white light that completely fills your body compo composing it of light so your body becomes completely composed of light and your mind completely clear and open and bright like composed of light open and clear and then return to the black smoke visualization and imagine that you Breathe out any disturbance in the form of black smoke. And then breathe in the white light. So we can we can try to couple that visualization with our actual breathing. So as we breathe out, we breathe out the black smoke and all of our disturbances leave us. And we breathe in this clarity and blessing in the form of white light that completely fills our body and mind. So just, just try combining that visualization with your breathing. And finish the meditation with the breathing in of the white light and imagine that you are completely free of all of these disturbing thoughts and physical physical tension and just just rest rest in that state of being very clear and open and free of all tension and free of all disturbance. So just rest and enjoy that state for a moment. Okay, and then relax your concentration. So, so that meditation is also um, a suitable basis to use as a healing, a healing meditation um, as well. Just uh, so it's, it's a good meditation. Um, now, we'll now do three, three quite similar breathing meditations. We'll just do them for a minute or two each. And now these, these, um, I had been taught these over many years you know so they're they're all in in like the tradition that i'm follow but um i i heard a teaching by another tibetan lama who put the three of them together and and i think it's got it's got some usefulness doing the three together uh, so so in each case we we are meditating on the breath but in a slightly different way. So in the first meditation, we're meditating on the breath and we, we visualize or we feel, we feel the breath coming in and coming in through our nostrils 
and down, down into, right, we can think of it going right down into the abdomen. And then when we breathe out, the breath comes up and goes out through the nostrils and goes out. And then we breathe in again. It comes in and it goes down, down to into our abdomen. And we, we follow, we follow that breath with our mind. So we actually, we're, we're sort of like we put the mind onto the breath and, <clears throat> and we breathe it in and the concentration is in that breath and we bring it down into our abdomen and then up again and out. And so our mind follows the breath in and out. All right. So that's, that's the instruction. So let's, let's do that just for, say, maybe just two minutes or so. So I hope you're all clear about the instructions. So we, we, we follow the breath in and we follow the breath out as, as our object of focus. So don't let any distractions come into your mind and you know keep the focus just 100% on that object. So let's just do a couple of more breaths in and out, focusing on the breath coming in and going out. And keep your focus just 100% on that object. So you can relax your concentration. Okay, so the next the next meditation is again a breathing meditation. And in this in this one, we we just breathe and we breathe very naturally. You know, we're not we're not in in any of these meditations. We're not trying to breathe in a certain way. We're just letting the, the natural breathing, the natural relaxed breathing, be the object of our focus. So this second meditation, so again, we, we're breathing in and we're breathing out. And with the in-breath and with the out-breath, mentally, mentally, I think, I am breathing in. So as I'm as I'm breathing in, I think I am breathing in. I am breathing in. And as I as I breathe out, I am breathing out. So I am breathing in 
I am breathing out. Not actually saying the words out loud, but mentally thinking, you know, thinking this is me breathing in, you know. So you you sort of mentally say to yourself, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And our focus, our focus is on that, on that action. So let's let's just do that for a few moments also. So you can you can take a deep breath to relax yourself. It's good, it's good sometimes to just take a big breath in and, and exhale to to relax yourself. And again, we're focusing on the breath. And we are mentally saying to ourselves, I am breathing in, I am breathing out, combined with the breath. Okay, so let's do that for a few minutes. And so you can just relax your concentration again. So the third breathing meditation, in this case, in this case, I'm going to focus on the sensation, the sensation of the breath entering the body and leaving the body. So I'm, I'm nominally I'm focusing on the sensation as the breath goes in and out through the nostrils. But as in the earlier discussion, um, ideally I'm actually focusing on the mental object of the breath sensation coming in and going out. So in all of these meditations, the ideal object is actually the awareness of the of the of the breath. You know, so you're focusing on the mental awareness or the that mental object rather than the physicality. But um, so here the object is this idea of the sensation of the breath coming in and going out. So we're focusing on that sensation. So we'll again just do this for a couple of minutes, focusing on the, the sensation of the breath coming in and going out.
Just bring your concentration back to the room. Okay, so um, yeah, so um, has anybody got anything they'd like to discuss about those meditations? <clears throat> In particular, if you had a favorite of the three. If you, if you have a question, please just feel free to unmute yourself and uh, away you go. So did you have a favorite of the three is really my question. I, I felt the the last one was my favorite and kind of tied back to the um the uh, never ending um, attempt to in the non dual thing that you were talking about just before we went into the meditations because yeah. I felt it was that it was closer to being able to to move towards that yep yeah anybody else no I, I like the tip of the nostrils it's sort of the sense of observing the passage and that you know the little switching that you notice that happens and when you stop breathing in you start breathing out there's a lovely little pause so just more conscious of it from a, a different perspective i suppose for me hmm. and what about some of the others there uh, because there's something quite important about these three meditations and, and i'll just talk about that once if some people would give me some feedback <laughs> um i actually like the first one with the black yeah. smoke and the white light i oh, felt yeah, that yeah. set the scene for all of yeah. them and the moment i did that i i had two um feelings that i wanted to release and the moment i went into it very very quickly the two minor they weren't really annoyances but so, you know, like tiredness, I think, and because um, I've had a big day and the other one that I felt just with work, they dissipated so fast and I felt so instantly calm. Yeah. I was just able to, but then it could be because I'm an experienced meditator, I don't know, and I'm constantly aware during the day but I just released them very, very quickly. Yeah, look, it's, I must say that's a, a favourite of my, my own practice is that, you know, that visualisation of the black smoke going out and the white light coming in as a way of, uh, you know, let's say eliminating disturbances or, you know, I think it's very powerful in that regard. But the, the so the three breathing meditations we did, one was sort of visualizing the breath coming in, right in, and then out again. And the second one was um, associating a speed, a, the, you know, um, the verbal, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And then the third one is focusing on the sensation. So these three, these three meditations um, indicate a disposition that we might have towards either form, the first one being form, coming in, going out, the second one being speech, you know, where we're associating speech um, with, with the um, breathing, and then the third one, mental sensation. So similarly, my, the one that appeals to me most that I am most comfortable doing is that third one of focusing on the sensation. Um, but other people, they like the physicality of the breath sort of coming in as a form and then going out as a form. And then other people like the association with the speech, you know, thinking I am breathing in, I am breathing out. So the three meditations all have quite a role to play um, at different times and, and you, can, you can gain some sort of insight from them in a different way. But um, 
Yeah, so it's it's an interesting practice to do the three of them together and then see that you you actually have a preference for one. Yeah, so. Anybody else like to uh, offer some comment or any questions? Um, I really enjoyed the, the well, I felt more attracted to the one where you're using the words. Yeah. You know, I'm breathing out. I've actually done that one before and, and it just helps me focus a lot better. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh. He does a meditation associated like that with with that. And and there's there's a very profound meditation where you it gives you an insight into the eye. So as you're breathing in, you know, the way he does the meditation, he says, I, I am the eye that is breathing in. And then when you're breathing out, he says, I am the eye that is breathing out. And so in that process, we get a bit of an insight into the relativity of the sense of I to our actions or our thoughts, so that the interdependence, the interdependence of the experience of I is related to the actions that we're engaged in. And so that that's quite an insight. Um, so your, that med those meditations are online somewhere with um, Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese teacher. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, he also has a lovely little meditation talking about the breath being like um, playing your violin. And he talks about listening to your beautiful music. Have you heard him do that? No, one? I haven't that one. No. So I use that sometimes, that line in my um, meditation to tell everyone to listen to their beautiful music and play yeah. your violin. And you can play at any time. <laughs> yeah. No, he is he's very good, I think. Yeah. Um, great teacher. Any other questions of Damien? Damien, are we able to receive uh, just those notes that you? Uh, yes, I have. I've sent them to Karen and I've sent them to Murray just at the beginning of tonight. So you're, you're most welcome to uh, to to get a copy of those. Um, uh, it's just sort of a bit of a you know jotted down sequence, but it, there's a couple of key points in there. So yeah, you're most welcome. And um, yeah. So, so I'll make sure they go out, Marion, so that everybody gets a copy. Well, well, thank you very much, Damien. I do have one question. I wouldn't mind asking, it, and I appreciate we're kind of at time. So if people feel they need to go, then please feel free to. But my question is, you, you've been practicing for a while, and and I'm always curious about what it is that sustains you and motivates you, if you like, your purpose that keeps you going to the seat and sitting and and learning and teaching. Would you have anything to share on that? Um, look, I think um, uh, in my case, I am inspired. I'm inspired by the Buddhist um, you know, like I like I said, you know, the purpose of Buddhism is the um, to uh, achieve the end of suffering for all beings, and so I think that that is some aspects of that do appeal to me, and particularly the working of the mind. So, like as an engineer, um, even right from the beginning, the the explanation of the mind and the way the mind works and this this whole idea of the mind holding an object and so so you know like for instance um the the experience of anger comes about because my mind is focusing on a negative uh object you know so 
holding a person as somebody who wants to hurt me and or holding the circumstances that I perceive as being hurtful and and the mere fact of me holding that is what creates my anger and it, that if I if I'm able to not hold that negative object then my anger will dissipate and so so that sort of very mechanistic approach in thought transformation has always been uh, something that made a lot of sense to me and has helped me a lot in my life in in any experience that I've had um, I can I can work with the experience from that that point of view of understanding the way my mind is fabricating the object and then because of my attention to that fabricated object I'm then experiencing this emotional turmoil and so that understanding that whole process has become sort of a major part of my approach to life I think and um so particularly that the Buddhist thought transformation practices um, is probably the strongest influence in my life, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for sharing that, Damien. And, and I'm presuming most of us, the folk here tonight are teachers of meditation. So I hope, um, like me, you've enjoyed listening to Damien. I'm very grateful, Damien, for you giving up your time and sharing your... Uh, it's my pleasure, yeah. No, I, I, when when I, Karen invited somebody from the centre to talk, I was, I was quite excited about the idea because um, um, I do have some strong opinions about the way meditation is presented and particularly this idea of the focal point moving so much in many meditations. And I think I think it's it's not conducive to really good meditation. You know, it's important to be clear about the focal object and hold that focal object um, very uh, devotedly, you know, devotedly hold that object without distraction and to overcome the, the desire to move the object around. Um, I think it's, um, you know, I feel that that is that happens a lot in, in especially online things that I've watched. I, you know, highly regarded teachers. I, I get quite surprised when, when they're actually moving the object, changing the object yeah. every few seconds. So. Mm -hmm. I reckon so, that could be the subject of a, a lovely session at the conference we're hoping to run next year. Because I'm, I'm just thinking all sorts of thoughts about that. I think that raises lots of interesting questions. Yeah. Each year. And, uh, and look, it's not being critical particularly, um, but I think if you watch many of the people online and you have that thought in mind, what is the object that he's, or the teacher is, what is the object that they're describing at this moment? And then in, a, in 10 seconds, what object is he describing now? And you'll find that so often the object is different. You know, they've changed the object. And, and so the mind, and, that, and that's what is, it actually appeals to people because we're so distracted that we, our mind wants to keep moving another object, another object. And unfortunately, that has contaminated the meditation instruction as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really engaging question. Lots yeah. of fun for us to think about. I've got, as I say, I've taught a lot in the corporate setting and my experience is that I'm teaching people who are, completely distracted and can't yeah. attention on anything for more than a second or two. I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences. And one of my thoughts about that, without wanting to take up too much more of your time, is that it's kind of, well, if you meet them where they are and you and over a little bit of time, you slow them down. So you, you might yeah. a bit quick and you might have lots of foci and then you start to go, okay, I'll just reduce it and then introduce more and more silence as they become a little more aware of their experience, which is new to them, typically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and that, look, that's a, you know, that's why I'm not I'm not being particularly critical, and I think it's why many people love the body scan because it's like I say, it's like a drive up into the dandenongs. You know, you you look there, look here, and and it suits people's minds because our minds are so habitually distracted, but. You know, you have to be clear that that that's not necessarily meditation. You know, it might it might help the person relax a bit, but 
mm-hmm. um, to be clear that it's not really a single point meditation, you know, mm-hmm. as I was describing. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, look, it, that's a co- it's a complex question because you you dealing with the public as as they are. So mm-hmm. that's right. Well, look, thank you again, Damien, on behalf of Meditation Australia and everybody who's present tonight. I think I can safely say how much I've enjoyed it. I can certainly say that much and presume on behalf of everybody yeah. else. They're still here, so that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I've enjoyed it very much, um, you know, preparing for it and thinking about what to say. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, so good. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you very Dan. much. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank That's you. awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks very much. <laughs>